Hey, would you look at that? The DGPT finally has scores available on their website. They have better time management than Cupcake. What's up, Degenerates? It's the Disc Golf World. I'm Jefferson. Alongside me, as always, the one with all the holes in his game, Swiss Cheese. And this is everything you need to know from round two of the Texas State Championships. I'm sure everyone is aware at this point, but I'll give it the good old Brody Smith treatment. You know, explaining things like you're a five-year-old. At the beginning of the year, the DGBT made the decision to not partner with UDISC as their main stat caster, instead electing to use PDGA Live for the foreseeable future. With this change, fans were told they'd be able to stay up to date at real time with Disc Golf via the DGBT website. It had been months since that announcement, and after multiple delays from the DGBT with comments along the lines of, we're working on it, this created some emotion throughout the community. And overall, I heard very few positive comments about PDGA Live. I don't really feel like going through all the issues the app was facing, so instead, think of some possible problems, and yeah, pretty much that's what happened. While that was going on, there still wasn't a way for fans to stay fully up to date on the event like in the past. To our surprise, the DGPT launched the scoring webpage the other night, and it looks like we're rolling with this off-brand UDISC copycat. But I guess I'm glad the fans were able to get what they've been waiting for. Better late than never. But I gotta be honest, I'm not the biggest fan. You guys probably think I'm just complaining to complain, since that's what I do apparently. Maybe. I guess I never thought of it like that. Instead, I can't get over all the colors being shoved at me. Someone really must have liked the Wonder Bread stamp that much. However, I do know my problems are more picky than fans, since I'm looking at it in the lens of a content creator and editor. Simply, the PDGA Live stat breakdowns look cleaner in my opinion. And honestly, they might be better than the old U-Disc too. I would so much rather see the number of putts hit rather than a random percentage. Sure, I could count all of them up, but I thought the point of this was to make it easy for the fans. And this is probably just a nitpick for myself, but when I'm editing, I like the PDGA Live graphics more. It just looks cleaner, and the information is organized in a better way. Granted, I know it's the same stats, so either one you use, you'll be fine. You'll just have to pretend the pup measurements are correct though. Thankfully, some features we used to have are coming back, but there are still plenty that are missing. The biggest problem is not having full season stats available for players. Hopefully that's the next thing that'll be rolled out, because at this point, the DGPT still owes the fans one of the promises they made earlier in the year. Not to mention every time I open any social media app, I'm immediately bombarded with comments about the poor quality. All I'll say on the matter is, if the players are the product, this has been the best year of disc golf so far, and in person, you can't beat it. I think that's the positive I want to end on. So Swiss, hit the people with the FPO recap. Look, I know everyone is expecting the Tatar's back baby hype train talk, but in all honesty, Anakin Steen's performance was more impressive and the better storyline. In her first lead card at a DGBT event, a stroke-off leader own, with Tatar charging from third card, cameras rolling and all eyes on her, all she does is hit every single fairway and finished 100% in C2 regulation or better on her way to another 10 under round, this one without a bogey, which was good enough to close the gap on Owen Scoggins for a share of the lead heading into the final day. All in a similar situation where we have seen far too many pros falter under the pressure. Showing at the very least, her mental game is strong enough to take down this event. A name that is not as familiar as some of the other Europeans, but the Norwegian champion, since signing a five-year deal last season with Guru and PCS Open, has allowed her to tour more and more in the States. She would have most likely made the DGBT Championship last season had she toured in the States full-time, and many might be expecting an own vs. Tatar battle tomorrow, but Steen should have a say also, before it's finished. For her, the magic round is 10 under on the final day. Own, fresh off of setting the course record, starts her round with a bogey and relinquishing her own stroke advantage over Steen. Things didn't really improve from there, as her slow start turned into a slow front half. She would only be two down on the front nine, yet the crafty vet built together a back nine that shot herself back on top of the leaderboard, or at least a share of it. The seven under back nine was second only to Tatar on the day, and her nine under keeps her in the mix heading into the final. Tatar, after her worst performance last week, her slow day one round that found her outside of even a chase card, had many beginning to question if we will see a return to the dominant Tatar we all know. It's only been a couple of weeks of considered poor performances from Tatar standards that had everyone talking about injuries, swollen ankles, fatigue, and even pregnancy speculation. And at the very least, after today's round, maybe we can just focus on her game, right? You creepers who want to talk about the skirt are really going to have to sit this one out. 
Tatar started off her round birding the most difficult hole of the tournament, hole one. Yet her game looked off shortly after. Her drives were low and her timing off. She would end up parring some of the easiest holes on the course, but was able to regain control starting on six with back-to-back birdies. And by the time she reached the back half, she had already started a birdie stretch that would continue for seven straight holes. Had her only par on the back half on 16, and surprisingly played 17 safe, choosing to lay up to the front of the peninsula instead of running it. Looking down a 70-foot putt, hits it calmly with her patented straddle jump putt and a birdie away from beating out Owen's course record she set the day prior. Tatar would go on to bullseye the drive for a tap-in birdie, 10-24 rated round, course record, and in third place only three strokes off the lead. Sarah Holcomb, 5-under, was just enough to hold off Evelina Salonen from making lead card. Sarah goes into the final round with a 13-under, four strokes off of Tatar. Holcomb will need some more birdies on the final round if she really hopes to hit the podium, though. Beth at 69. I just told myself, you've got to will this one in there. Whatever you have, just will it in there. This man is unbelievable. This is what athletes live for. This is the moment. Over on the MPO side, Anthony Barella decided to shoot an 1106-rated 16 down. I don't know what's happening, but as a lifetime AB fan, holy shit does it feel good to see him play at the top of his level. Granted, he did miss a C1X putt for the 17 down, but he already did that once this year. Twice would be kind of overkill if you ask me. Instead, he would grab 16 birdies hitting every fairway going 11 for 12 from inside the circle and banging three additional putts from C2. And at this point, I'm having a hard time to rephrase that AB is really f***ing great at disc golf giving himself a six-stroke lead with one more round to play. I know an 11 down doesn't sound all that impressive, but I swear it's still a solid score for this track. Ezra Aderhold managed to snag 13 birdies, but with two unfortunate bogeys, he would find himself in solo second place, nailing four out of his six C1X putts, and most importantly, he kept his putter hot for beyond circle one, smacking an additional six putts, his longest coming at 71 feet, knocking down the bird on nine. That all being said, he still has some work cut out for him if he wants a shot at the win. Other than Gannon Burr hitting the hazard in hole 2 again, he played well. Finishing with a 9 down, dropping him to 3rd place and only a few strokes away from the lead. I feel like 8 is still a few. Going 9 for 10 from C1X and 3 for 9 in C2. He played quiet disc golf getting the birdies as they came his way. Only finding real trouble on hole 11, going OB on his approach resulting in his only bogey of the round. Mason Ford must have heard me shit talking yesterday because he would secure himself another final day lead card after a clean 7 down. If he can connect from circle 2, he could push himself up to a second place finish. The only two people I consider having a shot is Ezra and Gannon. And I'm talking holy shot percentages. I find it hard to believe AB will go 16 down and then shoot bad enough to blow a 6 stroke lead. But wouldn't be the first time someone blew after 6 strokes though. With Barilla's round being louder than Matteo's personality, his 9-under round, which did move him up 8 spots, tied for 5th with a 15-under. That was with two bogeys that he could certainly clean up with a similar weather conditions tomorrow. Matty is veteran enough, with already having final day heroics, that could push for a possible podium spot. Calvin Heimberg was eyeing a possible lead card. He was 17-under, heading into hole 17 only to have a painful back-to-back bogeys to finish tied with Matty O and others at 15 under. With conditions like today, Kelvin has the tools to get to double-digit unders on the final day. Will it be enough for a podium? We'll still have to wait and see. Brandon Lotta had one of those rounds where you score solid, but you just don't feel that great about the round. Started out slowly, only going one under on the front nine. His putt wasn't there despite going two of three from circle two, yet gave up strokes to the field in C1X on the day. Brandon's 6-under, back half, was able to give him an 8-under day and tied at 15-under. Brandon will need to clean up his putt and stay out of OB to move up the ladder tomorrow. Many in the know expected better numbers out of Alden Harris in better weather conditions. He has had success here before and his round today is what fans in Houston has come to suspect. He started out 6 down through the first 6 holes and even with a back-to-back bogey on 9 and 10, was still able to shoot a 10-under round, 3rd best score of the day and was able to move him up 20 spots on the leaderboard. Adam Hamas would improve his round 1 score by 4 strokes, ending at 9 down. Although he still found some trouble with OB, his only bogey would come from a 3-putt on hole 12. 
Other than that, he played all right disc golf, with plenty of places to improve, especially when it comes to putting. Going only 5 for 9 in the circle and hit two other putts from C2 out of the four chances he had. Braden Sides must have used that Drew Gibson knowledge to his advantage, jumping him up five spots into a tie for 8th place. Starting off his round with a bogey, but shaking that off quickly, picking up nine birdies the rest of the day, which included three putts from beyond 40 feet and hitting all of his C1X putts except one going six for seven. Gavin Rathbun with a clean seven under that held down his eighth place spot, also going back to back rounds with 100% from inside the circle, now being 17 for 17 on the weekend. Gavin also put together another 18 holes without a bogey. You know what they say no bogeys, no sponsor. All the pussy. Nathan Queen put together a 6-under, dropping him two spots and tied for 8th place. With three bogeys, Queen finds himself on the third card, heading into day three. The Houston native Robert Burge would play a clean 6-down. I don't know about you, but I always imagine Chandler Kramer cheerleading for him anytime he's doing good. Now for some round 2 quick hitters. Scott Stokely dropped out of the event and will reveal the reason why after the tournament is over. Ella Hansen says f*** you to the States and gets her first win in New Zealand. Gavin Babcock jumped up 25 spots into 26th place. The Castaplast sponsored Jesse Niemannen not too far behind launching up the leaderboard 23 spots in 28th. Joy Tamale says move out the way moving up 26 spots after a bogey free 7 down. And that's everything you need to know from round 2 of the Texas State Championships. As we head into Championship Sunday. Thanks to everyone who supports the Disc Golf World over on Patreon and our YouTube members. If you enjoyed, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. It's the easiest way to support the channel. Oh, and if you want to know why Paul McBeth threw shade on another disc golfer, check out the video right here.